I'm Snow, and this is Gas and Go. Welcome to another episode of Gas and Go with Snow. I am here with the Wheeling Welshman, <laughs> my man. Congratulations. Thank you. And what are those congratulations for? Well, we went out this weekend and uh, set a land speed record with the fastest electric motorcycle on dirt. So, what was the record? The record was 214.34. So, you're telling me you rode this thing 214 plus miles an hour? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a perfect segue into tell me what it is. So, how old is the bike when was it constructed the bike was built by um randy nelson and kent riches uh mdr and AirTech mm -hmm. uh back in 2009 this was the first electric motorcycle to hold a certified land speed record okay um they set a bunch of records with it did a i think that was nine maybe records total wow. on the thing it was a lot okay. yeah um and eventually it got to the point where they had outpaced the technology. The bike, the batteries just couldn't do any more. So the bike got mothballed. It got retired in 2012. Now, my understanding is they didn't just retire it. I heard this thing caught on fire between Kent's legs and he's like, ah, just it walk away. got hot once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it got hot. Uh, it did not burn down. Um, it Obviously. got hot. Yeah. And I think, I think that was the point where they, they'd, kind of called it for, for that, okay. that project. It got put in a few museums, it went to the Peterson, it was kind of the, the centerpiece of their electric bike exhibit for a while. Okay, all right, so let me ask you, this is the position you're in at 214 miles an hour. Now obviously you'll have on a helmet and boots and all that. So what are the dangers, clearly falling off is a danger, <laughs> but what are the dangers of, you know, going that fast if your head comes up or a foot comes out, I mean, yeah. You, uh, what what, wheel what do you worry about? Wheel spin is the big one that I worry about. Um, is wheel I've spin? I've heard from Jim. Uh, Jim has kind of been our point of contact uh, as far as tech inspection, stuff like that. He does the exact same kind of uh, riding. He said, if you pull your head up at 200 mile an hour, you'll have 60 pounds pulling on the back of your head just from the wind drag, and you won't be able to put your head back down. The other one he said was, if your legs are outside here at all, squeeze the bike the whole way down. So, that's, so have you ever had a situation where your feet well, came off out or anything like that? That? Was, that was a new experience for me, this go around. So you can see my foot's kind of, the ball of my foot's kind of on the peg. And yeah. The brake lever is over here. I'm going to have to adjust the brake so that I can put my foot on it without taking my foot, you know, up and off like this. Because what happened was I go to do this and I'm not squeezing the bike anymore. And the wind just dragged my foot right off the side of the bike. Now, was it difficult to get it back in? It was not impossible. It was like a, yeah, you know, <laughs> pull it back on and just start stomping. Um, we left the front brakes on as as a backup because this bike's not been that fast at El Mirage. It's nice to have yeah. something. If you lose your brakes at 100, it's nice to yeah. have something. But uh, didn't want to touch them at that speed because you don't want to tuck the front. You don't want to dive the forks or anything like that. Yeah. So give it a bit I of stomping. I imagine the down force would be it. pretty significant at 200 miles an hour grab a handful of brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it stopped. It stopped in plenty of time, actually. Uh, a lot better than I expected. The back brakes are definitely going away by the end. Yeah. But <laughs> by that point, you can start to use the fronts. Then just right. coast it around to the return road, and cool. that was it. All right, so now let me ask you that. Now that brings me to a whole new thing. All right, so if the battery pack itself, you know, went up in flames, got hot, whatever. So what did you do to get this bike back on the road? So we knew that in those 11 years that battery technology, it's moved along significantly. Um, so there's a really good battery in the Honda Insight, the Gen 3 Honda Insights. Okay. You can pull so much power out of them. Um, and I bought a couple of pallets of them because they were going for pennies on the dollar, you know, factory runoff stuff, not okay. really knowing what I was going to put them in yet. Um, but I had it in my head that we were going to build something electric and that's, that's what they ended up going into. Okay, well, can we pull this fairing off yeah. and look at this battery pack? All right. So here we have a stripped down version of the same Giant. bike but and one thing i want you to take note is the dust mm. this is after it's been blown off so this is how much dust it picks up uh, at el mirage all right so now tell me about this battery pack so i'm looking at individual cells here yeah so the car that they came out of has 96 of those we okay. have 456 of so those. that's a lot on it's the insights. It's a 114p, sorry, 114s 4p. So that battery pack will do 800 volts at 480, sorry. Okay, 450 eight, volts? 
Yeah, 480 volts, okay. 800 amps. All right, and this is? That's the inverter. Box. Yep. So the inverter, and that basically takes your DC voltage from that high voltage pack and makes AC to turn the motor. And now what exactly is the motor? Uh, Can we flip this guy around? Yeah, let's do that. Let's pull the tail All off right. first, eh? So the motor, it's an off-the-shelf motor from uh, UQM. They were designed for light to medium duty commercial vehicles, so buses, you know, box trucks, that kind of thing. Go ahead and bring so it around. It's a torque monster. Okay, so now. So there it is. <laughs> this is the motor. It's a super low RPM, torquey motor. This thing revs out at about 5,000 RPM out of the box. Uh, the RPM limit's been raised. Uh, the power output has been increased slightly. Uh, the firmware flash from UQM um, that hot rods it a little bit. So let me get this straight. You took a bus motor, hot rodded it out, and made it into a land speed motorcycle. I did not. That, the motor has been on this bike since, since the get-go. So Kent and Randy, they built this bike, they put this motor on the table, and nine days later had a motorcycle running at Bonneville. They built that thing so, so from fast. from concept to finished product, nine days. Nine days, bent, bent the tubes around it and, it and it went. It's gone through a few iterations between, you know, since then and now, you see the frame's been lengthened here. It's okay. also been lengthened up the top here. So mm -hmm. the geometry has been changed a bunch. The thing is a super well-developed bike. It, it, it handles like, like a dream. Now, what about telemetry? How do you know what's going on with this motorcycle? So we got a race pack. Uh, I think it's an IQ3 dash, if I'm getting that right, and a um, G2X Pro uh, data logger. So we got front wheel speed, rear wheel speed, uh, shaft RPM, and volts, just kind of the really important stuff. You're kind of watching the wheel speeds as they go up. If the rear wheel speed is above the front wheel speed, you know that you're Something's going wrong. doing a big burnout. If you've got, a, if you got like an aerodynamically stable bike and you're just trucking along, you might not know that you're doing a you big giant You can just giant light burnout. them up and just be doing a, a wheel spin all the way down. Yeah, there. and that's, okay. that's <laughs> dangerous. Now, one of the things that I noticed after you got done, I looked at the tire, and this tire still looks brand spanking new. Yeah, we really aren't struggling for traction, and, which is and nice. And this is, I want to say this is four runs now? Five events. Five. Five? Mm. Five. So you got five runs on this tire, and it still looks brand new. Yeah, I'm really impressed. I, a lot of people tear up tires there just trying to get traction. As soon as you start slipping the wheel, it just yeah. starts tearing them apart. But as you can see, we, we slip the tire maybe once, maybe twice coming off the line. But okay. once you're in the, you know, up to speed, it, it was fine. No issue at all. All right, now what's the carbon fiber who dad here? That is a, like uh, a gas tank. coolant tank. Oh. So the motor, you can see the coolant. Now inlet, this is a big right misconception. Here. Most people think that an electric motor doesn't need to be cooled. Mm. And right? it doesn't, it just won't run very long. <laughs> <laughs> but what all does need to be cooled? So this has a it has a cooling jacket around the outside basically it sucks all the heat out of the uh, out of the stator out of the coils. Okay. And then the inverter also has a giant chill plate along the bottom to cool the the switching components inside. Okay. And that really doesn't generate nearly as much heat as we thought it would. Um, we mm -hmm. have the output temperature right here, and it went from something like twenty two degrees to twenty four degrees by the end of the run. So, so it really virtually isn't, nothing. No, it really isn't. Now, a lot of heat. this is another huge misconception that people don't understand when you're talking about electric vehicles. You talk about 400 volts and high voltage, and but notice there's a battery. There's mm. a small, this is just a regular old 12 volt battery. So what's the purpose of a mini 12 volt battery when you got so many uh, hundreds of volts on the bike? So that one, uh, there's actually two batteries, two 12 volt batteries. There's another one down the side here. This one is for the water pump basically there's a couple more things that run off it but it's pretty much for the water pump the reason that's separate from the other battery is the other battery uh runs the throttle so okay. kent and randy were finding they were running the pump and it was creating a bunch of noise on that 12 volt bus and messing with the throttle signal uh so they separated out into separated. two systems but the reason there's 12 volt is that everything else runs 12 volts all the lights all the gauges run 12 volts the switches the race pack they all expect 12 volts you still need a 12 volt system now one thing that I think you didn't mention is how you enable all that high voltage mm. is with a 12 volt signal. Yeah, yeah. So it's buried right down in here is a big gigavat contactor. And what is a gigavat contactor? What does that do? That is it's basically a giant relay. 
So a giant relay, so that 12 volts close that giant relay and allows the high voltage to flow exactly. to the necessary components. It's it's just a disconnect like you have up here, except mm -hmm. solid state. Well, not solid state, but it's a right. sealed component. Okay. And then other than the the main components that you just described, the rest of it is just a regular motorcycle. You got Basically, a sprocket, you got a chain. It's high boost the front end, um, high boost the brakes. It's a go-kart rear brake on the rear with a <laughs> Triumph Bonneville brake disc in it. Um, but it, it's sufficient, it stops the motorcycle. You go through brake pads about one set of pads every three passes. Yeah. <laughs> That's been taken down so significantly it looks like, since last so time. I'd say we're going to be uh, changing brakes. Yeah, here we're on the web bars. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got some new EBCs coming. All right. Well, hey, if you guys want to check out this world record run, definitely go to our page, revoltsystems.com, uh, or YouTube. Instagram. It's going to be posted on all our social media sites, and you can watch the Welshman take off <laughs> from the line, get a full pass at 214.034 miles an hour. And that was, I just found out this morning, confirmed that was the fastest motorcycle of the meet. So I'm, I'm even more stoked about that yeah. than the record. Now, last thing though. So all the hundreds of man hours you got and all the thousands of dollars, what did you get for breaking that world record? You get a hat. If you break a record over 200 mile an hour at El Mirage, you get a maroon hat that says 200 mile an hour club. So he's in that dirty in the two. dirty two club. I'm the dirty two club. That. You get a jacket too. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. So if you want to spend tens of thousands of dollars and countless man hours, you too could have a jacket Dude, and a hat. Forget Gucci. That's the most expensive hat that I've ever, <laughs> I've ever seen. Hey, thanks again, man. <laughs> Thank and, you. And uh, congratulations on the world record. Kill and it. we'll see you guys next time on Gas and Go with Snow. Let's do that again. <laughs>